Hello, this is um, an OXE video for Chemi 211. So today we will be looking at problem uh, 2.28 from chapter 2 of the Koretsky textbook. The question asks, consider a piston cylinder assembly that contains one mole of ideal gas A. The system is well insulated. Its initial volume is 10 liters and initial pressure 2 bar. The gas is allowed to expand against a constant external pressure of one bar until it reaches mechanical equilibrium. Is this a reversible process? What is the final temperature of the system? How much work was obtained? So, this is problem 2.28. And we know from the problem statement that we have a piston cylinder. where we have volume, initial volume is 10 liters, and we have P is 2 bar. And these are all the initial. And we know the external pressure is 1 bar. So first question asked, is it reversible? And the answer is no, because we know that for this system, we're trying to reach mechanical equilibrium. And when you have mechanical equilibrium, that means the internal pressure is pushing up against the external pressure until you reach the said e mechanical equilibrium. And therefore, this process is not reversible as once you reach the mechanical equilibrium, you can't go back to the original starting of initial volume and final, or initial volume and initial pressure. Now, for the second part of this question, we're trying to find what the final temperature of the system is. So we know that this system is well insulated, which means we can write out the fundamental law of thermodynamics, which is and we know that Q is zero. And therefore, we have delta U is equal to W. So the change in internal energy is equal to the work done. And we know that these must be equal to each other. So if we substitute the formula for delta U and delta or NW, we get the integral of NC delta T is equal to negative P. And if we also, in order to do this, we need both the initial and final temperature, and we need the initial and final volume. We know the initial volume, but we do not know the initial temperature. But we know from the problem statement is that this is an ideal gas of A. So the ideal equation is PV is equal to nRT. If we rearrange to solve T, we get T is equal to... That was not good. which is 2 bar times 10 liters over 1 mole times 8.314 times 10 to the negative 2, because this is the gas constant when we have liters and bars. That is equal to 240.56 Kelvin. 
this is important when we need to solve this equation. Now, if we continue this equation, we get NCV T2 minus T1 is equal to give equilibrium pressure times V2 minus V1. And we found, we just found, this is actually initial, initial, so this is the initial temperature, which is here, and we have the initial volume, which is 10 liters. We have the external equilibrium pressure, which is one bar, and we have from the problem statement is that for gas A, CV is equal to 5 over 2 R. Okay, this is the equation that we found. Now, we're trying to find the final temperature, which is T2, and the two unknowns that we are trying to solve is T2 and V2, but we know from the ideal equation that PV is nRT, and then we know V2 is equal to nRT2 over P2, because we are trying to solve for the final temperature of the system. So we can rearrange the final volume as a function of the final temperature using the ideal gas equation. So we have NCV. And then we know that N is 1 moles. So this is going to cancel out. This will cancel out. We know CV is 5 over 2R. We know the initial temperature. We know pressure. We know R. We know the initial volume. And we know the final pressure. CV T2 minus T1. However, PE is equal to P2 because this system is going to mechanical equilibrium at which means the, in, the inside pressure at equilibrium is the same as the external pressure. So P2 is equal to PE, which is equal to 1 bar. And then if we factor this out, CV T2 minus CV T1 is equal to then the P would cancel out with the P2, so we get minus RT plus PEV1. And now, should be. Now, we're trying to find T2, so if we rearrange this equation, we get CV T2 plus. And then we get T two C V plus R. Now T two is equal to P E V one plus C V T one over over C V plus R. And we know the external pressure, equilibrium pressure, initial volume, C V and initial temperature. When we do this, we get is equal to one bar times ten liters plus 
and we know from before that T1 is 240.56 Kelvin. If we divide this by 5 halves R plus R. And when we do this using R is equal to 8.314 times 10 to negative 2 because we're using liter bar. And for that, R needs to be times 10 to negative 2. When we do this, we get T2 is equal to 206.19 Kelvin. This is the final answer. So let me just rewrite that a little clearer. 206.19 Kelvin. Now, the final part of the question asks what, how much work was obtained. For that, we need to use the work equation. Work is equal to negative P E D V. However, we found T2, so it's much easier to use the fact that as this system is adiabatic, we know that W is equal to delta U, which is equal to integral of MCV T2 minus T1, as we did before. And now we know the initial temperature and the final temperature. And we know CV and we know N is equal to 1. So we can just solve this as equal to 1 times 5 over 2 R times, and we know that the initial, one, wait, the final temperature is 206.19 Kelvin minus 240, 240.56. Now we need to use the R value of 8.314 as we're trying to find work in joules. And then when we solve this equation, we get that work is equal to minus 714.38 joules. And that is the end of problem 2.28.